Welcome to another episode of PowerShell Bytes, episode number six. Now today, I just wanna really quickly go over the PowerShell help system, and specifically the help documentation on commandlets. Just a brief overview. I'm not going in, in depth, but I just wanna show this for those of you who may not be familiar, and kind of show you, you know, what can be found in that document. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the get event log help document. It's what I've used on episode four. And here, we'll go ahead and pull it up. I'm, I use the full switch because if I did not do that, it would only pull up basically the partial help documentation and it's not gonna show everything I wanna show you here. So obviously, you know, you got the name of the commandlet, the synopsis gives a brief overview and here's the syntax and I covered this in pretty good depth on episode four and uh, I mean I took like 15 minutes which is longer than I would like to take for these videos but I couldn't figure out how to make it any shorter again you have description here gives a description of the commandlet um, but here's what I want to focus on the parameters here this is basically the definitions for these parameters so if you watch say episode four and you see this parameter after. <clears throat> and I talked about how it accepts a value of daytime. You may know that, and you also may know by you know seeing these square brackets, that's optional, but you may not really know what that even means. What does after mean? And what's the context of that? So if you go down here to the parameters, it tells you, and it gives you some more information. It says, gets only the events that occur after the specified date or time. Enter a date time object such as the one returned by the get date command. So it gives you a little bit more information. Now you knew it took a value type of date time, but it tells you, you know, hey, what command actually produces that object type. And over here it gives some information saying required, which is false, which you could also find out in a syntax, you know, based, based off the uh, square brackets, meaning that it's optional. It also talks about positional. Uh, this is not a positional parameter. You must use the name. It also talks about here the default value. Um, I don't believe this command that has a parameter with a default value, but let me see. Get service, uh, the name parameter for get service has a default value um, of asterisk, which is a wild card. So when you type in get service, it pulls all of them up without you actually having to type anything. Now here's accepting pipeline input. I have not covered that yet. I will be covering that in probably a couple different episodes here in the future. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. But basically it says if this command accepts input through the pipeline. <clears throat> the other one here is accept wildcard characters. So I'm guessing if uh, this accepted something like the asterisk or something where I can put a range in or some sort of wildcard, that, that would be true if it did. In this case, it's false. <clears throat> I'd have to double check that to make sure. I'm not sure what I'm saying there is correct, but I'm guessing that's what it's for. So when I typed in, you know, help star service star, and it finds all the commandlets for, with the name service, that parameter probably accepts a wild card, wild card character. Would be my guess, anyways. Um, <clears throat> and again, it keeps going on here. It gives you all the different definitions of the different parameters, and a little bit more information. So, go ahead and scroll through here. There's a lot of parameters. Here it tells you uh, what type of inputs it takes. If it does, it doesn't, because again, uh, this command that does not take uh, pipeline input. And here's the output. So, <coughs> this command that's gonna emit something. Obviously, you're gonna see something on the screen, but also um, it um, emits an object on the back end, which could maybe be used to pipe information um, to another command, that, which I haven't covered yet. But that basically generates here like three different object types. And so when you're dealing with a pipeline, um, you may, you'll want to know what type of object it emits, which don't worry about it for now if you don't understand that. Um, I will cover that in future episodes. But it's something you'll need to know when you start working with the pipeline. Okay, outputs, notes here. And here's probably one of the most powerful parts of the help documents, and it's, this is the examples. Uh, most, I won't say all, but most commandlets have a very, very good um, 
help documentation on, at least the common ones, and they have a lot of examples. So sometimes the first place to look, I even look, is on a command line I don't know how to use, I'll look at the examples. And then once I kind of review the examples, I'll then pull up the syntax and, uh, and go from there. But a lot of times, just by looking at the examples, it'll give you a lot of ideas too. So, you know, if I want to get the vent log, it says newest five, log name application. It tells you right here, it gets the five most recent entries from the application log. If you go down here, it even shows some uh, more advanced stuff using the pipeline and variables. So this will basically gets some event logs, saves it to a variable, pipes that to a group object commandlet, and then a sort object commandlet to give you this nice little output here. Let me, I lost my place there. So it gives you this basically group. So the service control manner, uh, manager has 75 events, print has 12. So it can gives you some, uh, I guess, report. You can get some reporting here. And it gives you, you know, a uh, pretty good description of what's going on there. So <clears throat> that's pretty much it for the most part um, of the help documentation, but it's really thorough and uh, really, and when you get into the pipeline, it's very important to view the, doc, uh, the help document because it really tells you what you can pipe into and a bunch of other things. Uh, also here you'll see the related links and it also will tell you you know, related commandlets. So all the other event log commandlets are listed here. So you can you know, go to this commandlet and then explore and go to the other uh, commandlet help documentations and kind of understand how to deal with event logs in PowerShell. Also has here the online version, a link to the online version of the help document. Uh, you can actually do that probably a little bit easier here. Let me clear my screen. <coughs> help, yep, event log. And I could do online and this would pull up a web browser with the online help document. This is sometimes useful. So for example, there's actually a bug in the help system right now, which is showing incorrect syntax. And if you watched episode four, I talked about it, where we'll have square brackets around these arguments, which would basically mean that that argument is optional. And that's not the case, it's a bug. But if you go to the online document, it's actually accurate. Um, this is actually PowerShell version four, so let me pull up the PowerShell version five document on that and yes it's still correct so this is useful um, if you don't have the help system installed in your system yet for whatever reason you could pull up that um, and again if you want to see all the options with the help document well it has a uh, with the help command that you can pull up its help document but uh, that pretty much covers this up um, I just want to do a brief overview of that and uh, anyways I hope you and um, join me for some future episodes thank you